we're trying to figure out how we fit into the universe. Who are we and where do we come from? But if you're trying to figure out how you fit into the universe, you should probably try to figure out how you fit into the earth first. And that's what this book is about. Dawkins tells us about what kind of animals we are and what it means to be an animal. And here is the book, Richard Dawkins' The Ancestor's Tale, A Pilgrimage to the Dawn of Life. And Richard was inspired to entitle his book The Ancestor's Tale by this guy here, Geoffrey Chaucer. And here he is riding a horse on his way to Canterbury with a bunch of other pilgrims. And uh, Canterbury, by the way, in this map is right here in southeastern uh, England. And here is a group of pilgrims on their way to Canterbury. And they meet up with another group. And they get a bigger group. And they meet up with another group and there's an even bigger group. And just before they get to Canterbury, they sit down and have a dinner and they tell each other stories. For example, the knight's tale, or the squire's tale, uh, the yeoman's tale. And then they move on and arrive in Canterbury. And when they do, they see the Canterbury Cathedral, which is home to the shrine of the murder of Thomas Becket. He was the Archbishop of Canterbury, and he was murdered by some knights for standing up to King Henry II in defense of the church's rights to property. Now, the Canterbury Tales is a pilgrimage through space, through southern England. And, but Dawkins' book, The Ancestor's Tale, is not a pilgrimage through space. It's a pilgrimage through time. And he takes us, it's, but it's not a time machine that you can set the dials like the time machine in H.G. Wells' book. You can't just set the dials. Or it's not a time machine like uh, the TARDIS in Doctor Who, where you get in and you jump to a different time. Rather, it's more like a slow drift into the past, like Huckleberry Finn and Jim drifting down the Mississippi River on a raft. And around each bend, they are joined by, by other uh, cousins, and they become ancestors as they drift back into time. And the first closest ancestor they come to is chimpanzee, Pan Troglodytes. But there's an also another chimpanzee called Pan Paniscus, or a pygmy chimpanzee, and a bonobo. And uh, to get a better look of this, get a better understanding of this, there's the Pan Troglodytes on the left, bonobo on the right, and they meet each other about two million years ago in this voyage into the past. And then they tr we, our modern humans, go back down this river into the past, and we meet chimpanzees about six million years ago. And then together, we and the chimps flow into the past and meet up with gorillas about eight million years ago. And this is what that meeting looks like. Now, this book, The Ancestor's Tale, tra takes us into the past. And this is a map. This is the river. The, the human on the right travels down, for example, and meets the chicken about 310 million years ago. And we travel together as bird people, and we meet insects, for example, about 750 million years ago. And then on into the past of one billion years of animal evolution. So as you read Dawkins' book and think about Jim and Huck floating down this river of time, we too can be time pilgrims if we listen to our ancestors' tales, tales that are written into the fossils and the rocks and written into the genes of our bodies.